Hold up. All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how I do the undercut. Now, this this particular haircut right here is really starting to catch on. Brad Pitt um, was rocking something similar in the movie Fury, and that and I feel like ever since a lot a lot of people have been really trying to get this haircut. Now, his hair on the top isn't really long enough for me to do the the man bun to get the hair out the way. So I'm going to start off by gelling his hair. That way, I can control it a little better and keep it out of my way. This is a great tip, you know, especially if somebody's really just starting to grow to grow this haircut out and uh, you can't put in a man bun. So we're going to start off with a number one guard on the sides. If you're using a detachable clipper like I am, it's the 1A blade. The 1A blade. I'm going to do this all the way around. Now, the 1A blade is more equivalent to the, you know, the purple number one guard. If you do the one blade, you're going to see it's a lot shorter. It's almost a half, pretty much. Now my client right here, we're going to do like a real high uh, temple taper or a high blowout. He likes it super high and he likes it super close, super tight, bald. Um, let's go ahead and get into the number two guard and we have it all the way open. Now you can see that I'm using my other hand that, that I'm holding the brush to keep the hair out the way. You're going all the way to the ridge. You're going above the ridge. This is what makes it the undercut right it's gonna it's it's blunt you're not fading it into the the length of the hair on top you're not gonna fade it in because if you fade it in when you go to style it it won't work out so make sure you keep it keep that hair out of the way you don't fade it in like I'm doing with my other hand keeping it out of the way and I'm going all the way up above the ridge I would say it's about it's about a quarter inch above the, the ridge. Right here I have the number one guard all the way open. In this particular haircut, I'm gonna fade down. You could fade up if you want to. There's you know there's nothing set in stone. Whatever you feel comfortable doing. From the number one all the way open, as you go down, you're gonna close the lever because again, because on the sides we started with a number one. So that should blend in. Blend right into what to you know the base the base number so essentially we have a number one on the sides and we faded it up to the highest guard being a two all the way open you can see we went up over a quarter inch over the ridge now I took out my balding clipper and we're going to start uh, Yo, putting our first guideline and you can see on the temples I go up high but I kind of give a, a curve almost like a rainbow shape just because on the hairline I want to leave some hair there so when I line it up you can see the line the line will pop more and I'm going up about you know halfway up to the um, occipital bone in the back you can see I'm going super high on the, on the taper and I'm still doing that rainbow look and that's what my baselines look like. Let's go ahead and start fading it up. And we're going to start off with the Andes closed. On my other blowout video, you could, I did it it's a little bit different. Um, this is essentially how I usually cut, cut hair. I don't, really put too, I don't really put any more guidelines after this. I just start gradually open, opening the lever every notch, going up a quarter inch per notch. And uh, I start blending it out. I don't, really, I don't make any more guidelines. I just fade it out. So I started out, started out with the Andes closed, and as I'm going up, every every notch I go up a quarter inch. I'm opening it up as I go up the lever. Now I got my number zero guard to the second notch from the closed position, and that's pretty much going to blend it right into the the rest of the haircut. You know, you, you open and close the lever as necessary. I'm not going too into detail with, with this blending. Again, I have another blowout um, or, or, or temple taper video. You can check that out. That, that goes into more detail. I just really want you guys to see how I do the undercut. 
And again, I go back, man, and I detail my haircut. I'm going to do the same thing all the way around. I'm just opening that lever as I go up. Every quarter inch, I open it up a notch as I go up. And then when I get to the number, number zero guard, that should blend it. That should blend right into that number one on the sides. If it doesn't, then you open or close the lever as necessary. You do the trial and error method, right? You want to, if you don't hear any, any hair cutting, then you got to close that lever some. And if you are, you do hear hair um, cutting, then as you go up, you need to open it some, right? Because you don't want to raise that fade too high. That's the only way you're going to blend it into the number one, if it's necessary, right? And the gel that I use for that for the the hair on top, I use Elegance gel. It's more like it's like a. It's hard to describe. It's almost like a pomade gel. I don't know if that makes sense or like a, like a wax gel. It's good stuff. I like it. And I use that number zero guard behind the ears. I usually like to cut cut the hair a little bit shorter, taper the hair a little bit shorter behind the ears. Now let's do this side. We're doing the same exact steps. All the way around, even in the back. We're doing the same exact steps. Starting out that the that, that Andy's closed. Every every notch you go up a quarter inch until you fade that thing out. I know a lot of you guys are thinking, man, it's a super high taper, but once you line it up and you clean everything up, it really comes together. And like I said, I, I do whatever the client wants me to. I cut his hair. I've been cutting this guy's hair for for over five years, and um, over time he's pretty much developed it. Asked me for little tweaks here and there until we got the haircut that he wanted. And ever since the last couple of years, he's been rocking this cut, man. Well, not this cut. He he. Before this, he had a comb over, same blowout, same high taper, just a, a comb over, right? Now he's rocking the undercut. Let's go ahead and, and he rocks it with a part on the left side. You guys know with my lineups, I, I definitely use a, I definitely put my my index finger on that on the individual's uh, face somewhere on their face just so I have some stability. I start off with um, each each end so that when I'm when I'm lining it up, I have an end in mind. I can connect everything. And if you're new to my videos. I don't zero gap my blades. I, I put them as close as possible to where they're not zero gap just because I want to be able to put my, my liners on the back of somebody's neck, on the side. I want it to be all purpose. If I need it any closer, I just pull out my razor, right? And you're gonna see like you're gonna see when I when I use the razor how much nicer the line ends up looking. He gets it lined up in the front. Not everybody does, but he does. I say the majority of people that get the undercut, they don't really get it lined up in the front. So here I'm going to start using my mirrors. In other videos, I don't really use my mirror. I always have to go back and, you know, because I, I, the, the human eye can't see what the mirror can, like... When you compare, like you'll line somebody up with your eyes and you think it's awesome. And you look at the mirror and you're like, yo, this is terrible. So right here I'm using my mirror. Got a camera guy this time and, and, and he's recording. And it was crooked. It was crooked. But once I, once I faced him towards the mirror, I was able to fix everything and make it look crispy. And I still haven't even put the, the razor on. But I'll do what I can with the clippers first, and then I'll, I'll put the razor on it. And if you're, you're wondering what's on my arm, that's the No Turn. You can get it on Amazon for like 30 bucks. I bought it at the Orlando Premiere for 35 so it's a good deal on Amazon. I'll put the link you know, in the description, of course. Right here, as you can see, I'm using my other hand to, to pull up the, the 
the ear and um I I try to use I try to flip the the trimmer over when I'm cleaning up except for where where I'm lining up like right here I flipped it over cuz the neck is real sensitive but when I'm doing the line then I I put it I use it how I normally use it Gotta use your cool care, right? That's the Andy shaver. I'll put that in the description box too. Phenomenal shaver. And like I said, he likes it real skin tight. So I'm using the corner of the shaver. I'm pulling the scalp. And I'm just, you know, pretty much the same way you would use the corner of a clipper to fade. I'm doing the same thing with the shaver. Giving that extra closeness on the taper. This will help create that, that nice transition, especially when you're at a number one on the sides. That that shaver will, will give it that extra closeness to give it a nicer transition. And I'll do that on all, everywhere. I'll do it on the back and then on the sides as well. Using the corner of the shaver and flicking just like you would with a clipper. Alright, so now let's do some razor work. I'm using the Dorco Reds. And Dorco Reds are okay. They're, they're pretty good. They're not the best. I like to use the Personas, but I, I use those on more sensitive p people. And I'll use that on faces like the beards because, you know, the faces, the hairs are more coarse and stuff. So definitely use Personas for, for the face, for beards. Now, um, this technique right here, this is to take away those straight hairs that want to cover up the guard. I mean, the, the part, just because it's longer in that area. I'm just pretty much knocking out those little hairs that, that grow over the part so that the part will pop some more now I'm shaving I'm pulling the, the skin while I'm shaving and on this particular client no, no shave gel is needed on this hairline he doesn't really have sensitive skin so we could rock out without no, without any shave gel And I try to shave against the grain just because that that gives it you know closer a closer sharper line. So you'll see me flipping the blade all over the place and standing behind my client, but I'm I'm pulling the skin and, and you know I'm trying my hardest to get go against the grain. That's how you can get it to pop. And you can go with the grain first if you want, then go against the grain. That helps for people who have you know sensitive skin or or who have cur really curly hair. Helps prevent uh, razor bumps if you go with the grain, then against the grain. So, pulling the skin and shaving. And you can see that the, the lines are starting to come out a little better. Yo, hang on. And you know when you when you're lining up the sideburns, you could always use um, the ears as a as a reference points, so that you know you so you can make sure that both both sideburns are even with one another. So use the ear as a reference point. That's what I do. And normally I'll recline my client when I'm doing this part, but it make it real tough to record this with the camera if I do that. So I'm doing my best to 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 keep them sit sitting up and still you know line them up with the razor against the grain. So I'm doing the eyebrows here, and uh, yeah, I, I, a lot of pulling of the skin as you can see. When you pull into when you pull the skin, it makes it so much easier to get into tight spots, tight places. I don't use any special product. Um, it's normally pretty easy to to line up uh, eyebrows without any shave gel, but you can if you want to. Just don't get in their their eyes, obviously. 
and you know this, this is the natural shape of my clients um eyebrows I, I try not to make them too arched too girly looking unless you know they want that and again so let's rock out let's style the hair wet it a little bit first and let's put some elegance gel and elegance gel you need like a nickel size not even a dime that stuff lasts forever so uh, separating the the undercut with it, I'm just using my hands right now to shape it. You can see. And now let's I comb it up. I don't I didn't use any blow dryer on this particular client. He likes that wet look. So And you want you want you want to kind of comb it into the middle so that it doesn't comb over. That gives it that. You want it like standing up pretty much, so it's not growing over the the undercut. You can see the back, the hang time. That's that Brad Pitt Fury look. People love that that hang time. In the back, and I kind of bring it all together in the back to give it that like you know that V look that's it man that's my undercut with a high temple taper or a high taper fade a high blowout whatever you want to call it let's use that gummy aftershave great smell to it I'll put a link in the description for that too and my boy is done that's it that's that's my undercut thanks for watching guys I really appreciate it been getting like crazy support from everybody crazy love I really appreciate it it motivates me to make more videos so Keep doing what you're doing. I'll keep doing what I'm doing. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it.